Well, shares of battery startup QuantumScape bouncing back just a bit here after hitting a new low in the session. The stock is down about 35% year to date. The company, though, recently announcing an expansion into stationary storage, signing a multi-year partnership with Fluence Energy to incorporate the firm's solid state battery technology into Fluence's energy storage products. Let's bring in the CEO of QuantumScape, Jagdeep Singh, joining us for an exclusive conversation. Jagdeep, it's always good to have you here. Um, you've talked about the opportunity with stationary energy, uh, saying that could be a bigger even bigger opportunity than what you're seeing in the EV battery space. I think your company put it at $385 million in terms of global market opportunity. How does this partnership allow you to be competitive in that space? Yeah, so you're right that the stationary storage market for batteries uh, could be uh, around the same order of magnitude as, as transportation. I mean, as transportation, in our view, is on the order of a half a trillion dollars a year, so maybe $500 billion or so. Uh, and stationary storage, as you as you saw from the uh, the analyst reports, is between say three and four hundred billion. Is some of the estimates of, uh, uh, that are out there today. Uh, really, uh, Fluence is one of the leaders in this space. Um, yeah, they they own a significant fraction of the of the market. Uh, and and this partnership allows us to engage early, get to understand what the requirements are of that application, and be able to address that with what we're doing. As you know, the core product that we're building, uh, you know, it has um, uh, we're targeting you know better energy density, so more energy in a finite volume, better power density, so faster charge and discharge, uh, safer operations. All those things resonate not only in the uh, transportation sector, but also in the in the stationary storage sector. So we think we can really make an impact there as well. What kind of opportunity do you see there? I mean, you mentioned there a moment ago, you've built your mission, your business around the electric vehicle batteries, but this being the first non-automotive deal with Fluence, you know, what does that really set up in terms of some of the market opportunity and, and where have those discussions or perhaps this as the case study and then future discussions, where do you see those starting to arise? Yeah, so you're right. We built the whole business around transportation, and that's very intentional. And we don't intend to change that. We're not, you know, we we didn't want to, um, you know, be one of those players that spreads ourselves too thin and doesn't really solve any problem well. So our focus has been and will continue to remain. Uh, to really solve the transportation problem better than any other battery can. Uh, but having said that, uh, we've always said that the, the core technology is applicable to other sectors. Transportation uh, obviously is a core, but uh, stationary storage is another. Uh, consumer electronic devices could be another. Aviation, you know, it could be another. Uh, these are all areas from which we're getting a lot of interest. Uh, so we the, the basic strategy was establish a core beachhead, if you will, with transportation. And then once we're secure on that and have, you know, the, the, uh, the customer uh, traction there, uh, start to venture out beyond that. So that's what this Fluence deal represents. By partnering one of the leaders in the space, uh, we really think we can start to better understand the needs, better target our product you know, in, in the ways that make the most sense for this space, uh, and over time really, really be a player in, uh, in battery technology across multiple sectors. Let's talk specifically about your technology because you know you've mentioned that solid state technology, when you compare it to conv conventional lithium ion batteries, um, certainly has a, a significant benefit, not just from some of the infrastructure uh, points that you just highlighted, but also from a cost perspective, once it can be developed at scale. What does that timeline look like right now in terms of when you can get to scale and what kind of cost benefits are we talking about? Yeah, so Kiko, first of all, as you pointed out, solid state, you know, the way we're doing it really offers a number of key advantages. In fact, just yesterday, uh, you might have seen we uh, announced some uh, new data where we showed that we could actually uh, charge these cells uh, in uh, 15 minutes, uh, uh, 400 times in a row. So imagine really being able to uh, fast charge your car in 15 minutes, uh, literally every single day for 160 thousand miles of, of use. That's what we announced yesterday, uh, which is a, a pretty compelling uh, result. You, know, you really can't do that with conventional batteries because the batteries start to degrade as you charge them faster. Uh, now, what, what, we, what we showed back in December 2020 was the first single layer cells. That's one cathode, one anode, one separator. Since then, we have shown you know four layer cells and then 10 layer cells more recently. We're going to continue uh, adding to the number of layers that we build. Commercial cells will have on the order of a few dozen layers. Uh, we're planning on showing this year, uh, delivering to our customers, uh, cells that have uh, th those characteristics. And then in parallel with that, as you point out, we're building the, the production capability. So we have a pre-pilot line that we have already secured a facility for. 
where construction is um, is you know quite advanced. Uh, in fact, we've uh, we've moved people in. Uh, we're deploying tools later on this year. That facility will be producing cells uh, that we from the pre-pilot line uh, sometime next year in 2023. And those are the cells that we expect will uh, go into actual test cars. So by sometime next year, we hope to have cells that will go into test cars. And then by the 2025 time frame, or so mid-decade, uh, we expect to see those cars on the road. So that's really our, our scale up goal. I know it takes a few years to turn up new battery factories, but given that we have the customer support and the core technology has been demonstrated, uh, we hope that completing development and scaling up the, the, the uh, rest of the, of the production facility are things that we can execute on. And Jagdeep, I wonder if you can speak to some of the skepticism around your technology. Um, you're already facing a class action lawsuit from some investors who've said, you haven't necessarily been you know, truthful and transparent about your technology. And I only raise that because this comes at a time where we're starting to see some of the air come out of companies that have come to market through SPACs like yourself. Um, looking at numbers here, you've got shares of half of these companies that have come to market through reverse mergers down at least 40 percent. What do you say to those investors who say that, that your stock is trading on nothing more than speculation with no product on the market? What are they buying into? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought this up. First of all, we vehemently disagree with any assertion that we haven't been transparent or, or truthful. We, we've, we believe we've been more transparent than any other emerging battery company in terms of, you know, we've, we've been showing the data. The data, you know, uh, is the data. It's very, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and any assertions to the contrary, we just disagree with. Uh, relative to the stock market, obviously, you know, we can't predict the near-term stock market. There's lots of factors that influence stock prices in the short term. Uh, I mean, as Warren Buffett always says, you know, obviously, in recent uh, in recent days and weeks, you know, the uh, the combination of uh, geopolitical uh, tensions and uh, you know the Fed raising rates uh, have had an impact on high growth stocks. Uh, but from our standpoint, uh, you know, we are focused on doing what we can control, which is to build products. Uh, to build the best batteries uh, that, that we can build, uh, batteries that can really uh, move the needle in terms of energy density, which means range, you know, fast charge times, you know, 15 minutes, as I mentioned, safety. These are all things that we think, um, you know, based on talking to our automotive OEM customers, are critical to help enable uh, a more mainstream transition to electrified power trains. Uh, and our belief is in the long run, uh, that even though, well, in the short run, stock market, uh, you know, prices can be uh, can be uh, almost random, uh, that in the long run, those prices do correlate with fundamental company performance. That's all we can control. Uh, and we believe that if we execute on that front, uh, that we will, in fact, uh, you know, create uh, uh, a lot of value for our, 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 our shareholders. Uh, and and our, our track record so far is one of execution. So if you look at 2021, uh, we announced that we would have that we had four goals we wanted to meet during the year, including delivering you know uh, uh, four and ten layer cells, uh, and we hit every one of those goals last year. So I think our track record uh, so far speaks for itself. Our data transparency speaks for itself, and uh, notwithstanding people that have an incentive to try to you know uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, put out misinformation to try to manipulate uh, you know stock markets for for their own gain. Uh, we want to remain focused on building product that works, partnering with these automotive OEMs who have very extensive battery testing capabilities, have tested our products, you know, have, have validated them. We've done third-party testing as well that's validated the results we published. So I think, I think the assertion that in any way our data is not, uh, is not based in, 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 in reality is, is just, uh, it's just not correct. Well, Jagdeep, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today for this exclusive conversation. Jagdeep Singh, CEO of QuantumScape.